Welcome along everyone to the Really Connect How to Use LinkedIn to Launch a Product or Service. My name is Mike Clark or often called Michael Clark as well and it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. I'm looking forward to being able to understand some of the products and services that you're looking to launch into the marketplace and we've got a lot of fantastic content that we're going to be sharing with you as well as some very practical examples of what is possible when launching a product or service through LinkedIn and some live uh, examples of people and companies that are doing that. And um, just one thing I did want to highlight before we get into it is that if you're listening to the live version, obviously feel free to ask questions. If you're listening to the recorded version of this, then you know, might want to pause and stop at certain times and take notes. Um, but the one thing I did want to highlight is that if you are doing the live, uh, attending live, feel free to ask some questions. I will do my best to make sure that we can cover them all for you. However, due to the, the element of time and making sure that I respect it for everyone attending and listening in, I, want to, I may not be able to answer all of them. So feel free to post them, but if I don't answer them, we can always look to take the conversation elsewhere as well. Uh, you'll see in places you can take the conversation elsewhere, you can follow us at Really Connect, um, you can, uh, is, our Twitter, is our Twitter following, um, our company uh, LinkedIn profile page, so our company page is Really Hyphen Connect. We have a great Facebook group which is uh, looking, at, which is called Really Connect as well. You can get download our book from our, our website as well. So um, without any further ado folks, let's get into it because we've got a lot of really cool stuff to cover. Um, so one of the things I did want to let you know about though is a little bit about why we do what we do because I think that's important for you to understand why we're in business and what really motivates and inspires us. Um, hello Lorna, I see you've just popped a nice comment there. <laughs> um, but really what we're all about here at Really Connect is about empowering business owners to energize their enterprises so they can connect with more companies in engaging ways. And that's really what drives us here at Really uh, Connect. We're very passionate about that and LinkedIn is just one of many platforms but is a very powerful platform if you're looking to connect with other businesses in a B2B sense or in a B2C sense, might be looking at connecting and finding partnerships. So that's a little bit about why we do what we do and what drives us. Um, a bit of the agenda of what you can expect over the next 40 to 45 minutes is I'll share with you a bit about us. We'll be looking at the product or service uh, exposure. We'll be looking at some extra tips on promoting yourself via LinkedIn. Uh, we'll be looking at a little bit about uh, what some questions you can ask yourself to improve your ability to market yourself or your product and service online. And also a bit of Q&A, as I said earlier, you feel free to have a Q&A as we go through and I'll stop at certain times to answer them. And uh, if I'm not able to answer them all, uh, I've already explained why that is. And then we'll be looking at some next steps as well. Often we're, we've just launched a social selling program and people are often asking us a, a lot about that. It's the first three programs that have actually sold out. So it's something if you're interested, there's, there's very low risk to, to more engaging ways you can get involved, but I'll let you know about that only if it's relevant for you. Um, and so without further ado, let's, uh, one of the questions I had for you is, uh, you know, I think it's first to start looking at what's possible with LinkedIn when it comes to launching your product or service. And I know there's a lot of people who are tuning in uh, in the chat box there, there's been quite a vibrant chat. And just whilst we're starting, I'd, I'd be very curious as I'm going through this is for you to just to type in what product or service are you looking to launch at the moment? Is it a book? Is it a program? Are you in pre-launch phase? Is it a, you know, a, a coaching program? Is it a consultancy program, a product? Feel free to just type some responses in there. Online course and gamification, very cool, and um, Coaching programs, software, okay. Uh, Infusionsoft app, ooh, Alicia, we, we use Infusionsoft, that's very cool. Training course, okay, Kindle, okay, great. So. We're launching a book on Kindle. Hey, Ruth, nice to see you. A book, uh, beautiful. There's a wide range of responses there. Thank you for that. And you know, whatever you, you're looking to launch uh, on LinkedIn, where is a product or service? I'll give you some of the ideas of what's possible with LinkedIn. Now, it is possible to use LinkedIn to be able to get highly targeted research, so that you can and and, and exposure, so that you can launch your, your book to number one on Amazon, for example. And there's ways you can do that for using company profile and different. Some of the things we'll share with you. Um, you are, you're able to obviously launch a new product or service. I'm going to share with you some examples uh, and stories of people who have done that to get some massive credibility about their marketplace before they get out there and start, uh, you know, and start communicating to their audience. And it's a great place, LinkedIn, to be able to get your market excited for a new product. 
because you can have a communication process and engage with people who are interested in what you have to offer and you know and, and by engaging with them you can then find out you know what they're interested in and get feedback from them and that can even help you design the product or service that you, as you go through it it's one of the best ways it's actually how we designed our social selling program we started with the concept we went out there spoke to literally dozens and dozens of people some we approached it through LinkedIn others through our networks and got some great feedback about the product um, and then as a result of it you can also find pre-launch clients it's a great way if you've already got a relationship with someone to then let them know hey thanks for your feedback by the way <laughs> Guess what we've got? Uh, and you know you conduct research on what the marketplace actually wants. There's some great places such as groups, um, you know, as well as company followers for your fan page. You can start a group, or you can you know, get involved in other groups. You can set up polls, and we'll cover some of those things today. You'll learn the language used by your prospects to write targeted copy. This is a big one, and I think this is where a lot of um, programs and launches go wrong because if you knew the language that your target market was communicating in and speaking in then you could write highly targeted messages that would be speak as if the, the, the client or the prospect would be saying it themselves and so you know it's a that's a very cool one which comes out quite a bit is that you're able to capture the language that comes out and you'll be able to generate highly targeted list of leads throughout the process and that's what we do in some of our advanced training is showing you how to turn the, the engagement you create into leads that generate a new business for you. And obviously you can build a following by being active in groups and you can create some tools and resources uh, for people uh, visiting your profile and people who are looking to engage with you. And so we'll be covering rich media content just touching on it a little bit today um, because that's a really powerful way to connect with people and, and demonstrate value in a passive way by having content on your profile. And you know, as I said, you can target your message for different industries, job roles, etc. And we'll be sharing with you uh, a little bit about the uh, marketing ad, uh, the marketing slash advertisement opportunities and solutions that LinkedIn provides. It gives you an amazing ability to target and segment your audience that you're going for. And just, just on that point too, folks, um, you know, today, I am going to be focusing, I'd say, more on the what in terms of what is possible with LinkedIn. And the reason I do that is intentional because until you really understand the power of it and what it can do in the different areas, then you know there's there's people get lost in the how and they're not really understanding the bigger picture. So I will be, although I'll be talking about the what, I will also be giving you a little bit, uh, you know, elements and and some chunky stuff on on the the how side. But please know that you know this. I'm not going to be able to go into the depths of everything, and um, you know, and uh, but it is possible, and that's obviously what we do. But I just want to manage your expectations on that. Is that I will make sure I give you some really good stuff you can walk away with, though. Um, just before we get into that, just so you know who we are. That's me on the right hand side. Uh, my name's Michael Clark. My business partner Bert Vadonk. Um, our company was originally founded in Belgium back in around 2003. We uh, were certified as the world's first uh, LinkedIn training company in 2010. And uh, you know we've written a book on the left-hand side that it's given every link LinkedIn employee at uh, LinkedIn's headquarters in Dublin. And uh, it's a part of the onboarding process for new employees. And what it means is that you know we know what we're talking about when, we, <laughs> when it comes to LinkedIn, whether it's launching a product and service, whether it's about your personal and professional branding, company branding generating leads, hiring staff, that type of thing. It's all the sort of spectrum of what we do. Um, we've worked with a wide range of companies, some of your household blue chip names, through to thousands and thousands of small business owners. And uh, you know, and it's really about what, what distinguishes our training from anything else is it's not just about saying, here, press a button. It's more taking a, a couple steps back and saying, what's the strategy you're aiming to, uh, to create, to deliver, so that it achieves key objectives, whether it's new business, launching product, launching a service, you know, uh, you know, rolling out a, an event, engaging with people in different markets and different sectors, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, it really comes down to your key objectives. Uh, I won't bore you with the details about myself other than to say that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to small businesses and uh, as well as uh, blue chip organizations from training very, literally thousands of small business owners right through to delivering training with a lot of household names. Uh, big company names there, and and really what makes me passionate about doing this is I just love showing business owners how to connect and engage, and uh, show them how to become more energized around how to achieve their objectives uh, in a quicker way. So that's a bit about me. Bert, my business partner, is our master trainer here, 
He is a phenomenal expert when it comes to understanding the platform. Uh, he's not able to join us today, but obviously I'll be uh, doing this webinar in his absence. He's a co-author of five different books, and one of his passions in life is, is life hacking, which is hacking away frustrations of your life and really speeding up results. It's something that takes you perhaps half an hour, he can show you how to do in five minutes. And he's got a lot of cool tools around that, which we often cover in more of our advanced training as well. So before we get into it, I just want to sort of share with you like a practical example of what um, you know what uh, companies in the current marketplace is doing. And uh, one of the companies that we uh, have been looking at is a company by I think everyone would know now is Samsung Galaxy. And I, and I chose this example because yes, although you might be a small business owner um, and you think, okay, wow, they've you know got big budgets and everything to throw at this, and, and I don't. Um, I think it just highlights the point is that this is a, a, a company that was really up against Apple. And by the way, Apple used a lot of the um, LinkedIn techniques to be able to get a lot of research in the marketplace uh, before they uh, launched iPad and they used it as a way to get feedback. But Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy obviously, it took quite a bit of time and effort to develop a campaign around LinkedIn. And they did this specifically before they launched the product because they wanted to find out what the marketplace was saying. And I think you just have to look around this day and age, whereas like a year and a half, two years ago, most smartphones were our Apple iPhones. Nowadays, how many Samsung Galaxies do you see out there? And you know, and I think it comes down to a big part of how they launch themselves through LinkedIn. And you know, their goal, as you can see some of the bullet points here, is that their goal was to become the leading smartphone um, you know, uh, producer. And as a result, they developed a content-led strategy. They then basically revamped their company page so it's more interactive, but also um, when they when people look to engage on the company page, what they do is they look to be able to build a relationship with them. They then targeted 20 million users across seven countries for, for feedback. And uh, and what happened over the course of this is they got this is the, in the pre-launch phase. And they engage with these people, they target with them, they got feedbacks, uh, discussion groups, feedback groups, etc., with them. Uh, and then literally before they launched, they'd already built quite a big following. But most importantly, which is the key point I want to highlight here, is that they were able to develop and understand what were the things that their marketplace wanted and what were the things that were going to turn them on and what were the things that was going to turn them off. And you know, and this is a really important point because if you're looking to launch a book or a product or a service, okay, then what you need to do is you need to find out what are, what does the marketplace actually want? What are they telling you? And this is a great example of how they've done that. Um, another example that I have just off the top of my head is of a company called Penman Public Relations. And I was just sharing the story of it. this was something the other day is that this is the company that uh, does a lot of PR for organizations. And they've done quite a bit of research now for, for and they specialize in product launches and so on for their companies, for various different companies. And they've found now that by going out and, and connecting with over 100 people on LinkedIn or into the thousands, so if, the, if the campaign's big enough, that the feedback that they get so highly targeted that it's a massive cost reduction, A, because they get the product and offer right, but also B, in terms of traditional market routes, uh, to get feedback is is often very costly, and you know this is the very cool thing about LinkedIn is that you're able to go out to the marketplace and you can build a network and build a following, and you know it takes your time, but it doesn't cost you massive, massive amounts of budget, and and that's a really important thing to understand. And what it means is that by getting that right, investing a bit of time into it, you know, in the example we're using here, they might have got out to hundred people, but you know, that might be out of your reach based on your time constraints. But could you go out to 10 people? Could you go out to a dozen people? Could you make that a target? I would say that's a very realistic target. You know, another practical example on our side, what we do with, um, with companies is instead of saying, um, you know, listen, one of our goals is to, to reach out to sales directors of companies in management consultancy and sales directors and marketing directors to, to discuss with them the state of social selling and how they're getting on with their companies and their teams, most importantly, with applying social selling techniques. And instead of leading in with saying, listen, how about we, uh, we talk about doing some training, because that's our end goal, our idea would be to work with them to be able to 
engage with their team to show them how to apply LinkedIn and other social selling strategies to be able to uh, you know, accelerate their results. That's the end outcome. But taking a few steps back from that, we realize that by trying to leverage our networks in ways to get introductions to those types of people, people are a lot more hesitant if they're going to be making an introduction and they know that that person is going to be potentially hit up for some training. So what we've done is a different way is that we've designed, we've, you know, in this social selling era, you've really got to think about the content that you're creating. And I see a number of you are creating books, uh, sales strategies, and uh, you know, coaching programs and everything, which is fantastic. And so you can use LinkedIn in, in highly targeted ways to find the types of people that you would like to build a relationship with. And then what you could do, like we're doing, is that we're actually reaching out to sales and marketing directors. And instead of asking for them to purchase training from us, we're saying we're engaging in, in conducting research, which we're going to turn into a white paper and or book. And what we're looking to do is to understand the state of play of social selling in, your, in, in companies across the UK. And would you be interested in you know, answering a few questions in an interview style? And what we'll do is we'll give you a copy of our book to say thank you, as well as once we produce the results of the survey and the, and the interviews, we'll make sure that you get a copy of it so that you're able to uh, you know, apply some of the lessons of what companies are working, uh, what companies are doing really well. And what we're finding is the engagement on that level is a much higher level. You know, people are like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm easy, you know, I'd be interested to participate in that. It's intriguing, it's something I'd like to engage with. And now what it means for us is, before we launch a lot of our training, we actually have a marketplace of people who we've got a good relationship with. So there's just a couple of practical examples that I wanted to share with you before we get into this, because um, what's happening is, is that I just want to get your, your brains thinking, your, your minds ticking in terms of what ideas and possibilities are there out for you with using this platform. And now when we get into some of the practical stuff, you can start thinking about, all right, what are some of the things I could be doing and how could I be reaching out? So. A couple of things to, to consider is that when you're, when you're launching a product and, and service through LinkedIn, okay, there's three different levels. The first level is the personal. Obviously, you all have a personal profile, so we'll be looking at some ways of, of things you can be adding into your personal profile to make it more attractive. You can then look at your product and service, and some of those, and the product and the service is at a different level, but it really can sit between your personal profile by having rich media content on there as well as it can sit also on the third level, which is your company profile. So I'll show you with, with our company profile, for example, what we've done to put product and services on there, and um, you know some of the things that you can do on your company profile to, to gain exposure through LinkedIn as well. Um, before we go any further, I just thought, let's just take a quick stop check, though. Is there any questions that are coming up? Uh, I haven't seen any so far, but you know, as I'm, I'm going to have to jump to the platform and go live, I'm just curious if there's any anyone has a question about what we've covered so far. I know it's been more practical examples, but uh, if there is at the moment, feel free to throw that in. Uh, and if not, what I will do is continue on in the, in the absence of a question. So, a couple of things. Uh, LinkedIn marketing solutions. This, In terms of finding targeted ways to build a following, there's two ways you can look at it. Um, I'm going to go to the, the platform now. Okay, well, we'll share my screen. Great. So. Hopefully you'll be able to share my screen. Can you please just type in yes if you can uh, see my screen? And I will look to, yes you can, great, terrific, all right? So that's good news. <laughs> all right, so a couple things. So when it comes to targeted searching, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can look at this. Um, one of the things, and, and again, I'm not gonna go into too much of the detail, I'm just gonna sort of say, hey, look at this, this is an area you can explore in a bit more detail yourself when you've got the time. Okay, it's sort of just sort of, it's almost like we're in a dark room and I'm flashing a spotlight around and saying, oh, look at that, hey, look at this as well. And the things that if it's relevant for, you can go in and spend more time in, in your own, uh, when you've got a bit more time yourself. So this is a button at the top of the center of the, the search query box which says advanced. And if my computer will speed up, uh, there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. <laughs> But when you're, the, the really cool thing about LinkedIn and one of the most powerful buttons we find with LinkedIn is definitely the advanced search button. And so these button, golden buttons over here on the, the right hand side are for the premium profiles. Uh, just as a side note, with a lot of our training, we recommend people use a free profile and only upgrade when they know, you know specifically why they're looking to upgrade. A lot of our training is done with a free profile. 
however, what you've got over here on the left-hand side, you've got a lot of keywords. You, uh, so I should say, you've got a lot of search criteria by which you can target in to identify different groups of people. So here's, you can type in keywords, you can type in, if you know the name of an individual you're looking at there, if you're looking at the title of individuals, so if often, using an example of ours, let's say sales director, so director, okay, so that's a sales director, I can look at current or past, or past not current, uh, and then I'll, maybe there's certain companies I'm looking to identify and target in, uh, laser in on, and, uh, and then also I'm looking at location. I can look at anywhere in the world or I can look inside the United Kingdom. And if it's inside the United Kingdom, I can even look into the, in terms of the actual region. I type in the postcode of a region and then that'll give me within a certain radius. I can look inside London, for example, SW1, and I can search inside a certain amount of radius. So I can say, say 40 kilometers or 25 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles, etc. So there's some of the functionalities, but you know, this is uh, one thing. So if I'm looking to reach out to sales directors, you know, I haven't identified much more criteria on that at the moment. I could buy, go by industry, which is something I could do. And but let's just see how many people are directly related in my network that could potentially be a, a target market for myself if I was looking to, to launch a product or service in, with this criteria in place. So at the moment, there's 19,366 potential people I could connect with which I think you'd have to admit is quite a few. <laughs> and just so you know, depending on the size of your network and the quality of your network, depending per sector, your results will always vary. So if you, have, if you don't have a strong sales director net background, then if you did that search, you'd be very weak. But if you had a strong holistic therapy background, then obviously when you did searches of that nature, you get a much stronger uh, you know, response so I've got a, a relatively strong uh, sales director network, so that's not too surprising, the number of people. Side note, how many people, uh, for people listening in, do you know how many people are on, the, uh, on LinkedIn in the UK? Just curious to get some responses that from you whilst we're going through this. Um, but essentially, so this is a way, uh, there's, uh, so this is a way you can really target in on people. Um, and uh, let's see if you people reply in there, thousands we've had. Well, the, the correct answer is actually over 13 million. It's increased over the last tw uh, 12 months from 9 million to 13 million. So in terms of the number of people joining LinkedIn, it's really getting exponential here in the UK. Well, not quite exponential, but the growth is quite phenomenal. And, um, you know, and, and it really gives you some more targeted searches. And so this is one way that you can really reach out to other people. You can see here by first degree, by second degree, that uh, first degree means that I am in direct contact, so I know Des Taylor. We've met, I don't know him that well, but we've met uh, you know, in the past, and so we've connected on LinkedIn. Glenn Warrington is in the second degree. So he is, you know, he's in the second degree for me. He's not able, so what that means is that if the people here, this is what makes LinkedIn very powerful, is that if I want to get through to Glenn, he's in my second degree, and he's in my second degree because somebody who I know, such as Michelle Clark, knows Glenn directly. And so if I was looking to get in touch with Glenn, to uh, get involved in my pre-launch campaign, for example, I could get in touch with uh, Michelle as well as looks like ten other people or nine other people who could I could get introduction over to Glenn. So that's one way to to reach out to more people to connect with them. Um, so that's the bit bit about the advanced search. There's a lot more I could go into. And again, it's what we do in our training is getting very good at getting advanced search uh, queries in place because the better your ability to search, you can reduce it from nineteen thousand because you really want a target list of just a couple hundred people, I and mean, if you know those couple hundred people are your ideal prime marketplace, then you develop strategies to, to get introductions to them. So, so that's one level is really the advanced search. Uh, another element is in um, is looking at the advertisements, which is what you call what LinkedIn calls their marketing solutions. So you might uh, want to be able to deliver a, a targeted message to a select group of individuals. So what I'll do now is quickly show you. What you can do to be able to um, to develop some ads, which have an amazing amount of targeted nature to them, and so I'll let you read through this in your own time. But essentially, it's just giving you a bit of an overview of what what the LinkedIn advertising functionalities allow you to do. And then, because this is a paid function, I need to prove that I am myself. So I need to enter my password. And so there's two elements here that we can look at. You can either create an ad or create a sponsored update. I'm not going to have enough time to go through the sponsored update, 
it's other than just to, I'll touch on it in, in just a moment, but I'll quickly focus on the creating an ad for now. And here's some of the functionalities of it is that, you know, you're able to give this ad a name. So imagine I'm creating social selling program. Okay, there we go. You can see I've already typed an ad in like that. And then you can basic media type. You can either do video or you can have a basic media type. So basic is that you can add text and images. Just text and images. And video gives you the ability to obviously add in video for that to make it a bit more interactive. And um, when you're developing ads, by the way, you always want to make sure that you look at where you're pointing them to, what action you're looking them, uh, you want that person to take. So is it to a page? Is it to, uh, you know, maybe if you're in a pre-launch phase or in a launch phase, you either say, hey, get a free download of my book or get a free consultation or uh, get a, you know, whatever it is. You want to make sure you point them somewhere. So when it comes down to here, the ad variation, you can either point to a page, you know, and you can just create a, an example. We might create, for example, a really, a really, so really connect, uh, the page we have is there, reallyconnect.com forward slash SSP. That's often where people go to find about a social selling program. And then you can put in a headline here as well. Um, master, yeah. Mastering social selling, that's the ad I created earlier. I've done this to speed things up, but you obviously have to think about the title you're having in there. Um, and then you can have a bit more content. You can have a bit of a blurb in here as well about how would you sell what it is that you're offering. And then you can add in a video, or again, if you change it to basic media up here, you can look at turn to, to just offer an image. And just a side note too, folks, is that uh, the, the stats are out that uh, when it comes to Facebook and LinkedIn ads such as this, the image is by far the most capturing uh, component of it. So you really do want to think long and hard about the image that you have and test different images. And that's often what the experts are saying uh, is the best way to be able to measure the uh, best way for, for you to gauge the responsiveness of, of a um, ad is to actually look at the image and test that first before the headline. So that's just a side note for those people out there who are advanced marketers who often test the headline first. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could point to a page on LinkedIn. So we've got a company page, so obviously we can look to point people to that in different pages. So we've got our LinkedIn social selling program page, so we could point someone there so they could find out about it. So anyways, you sort of get the gist of it here. It's, it's worthwhile playing around with, okay? Um, you can create variations and so on as well. Um, can you view draft? So can you view a draft, I think was... Yes, you, uh, you can view a draft, yes, before you actually go live. Yes, that is the answer uh, to your question. You can view a draft, and then you can obviously create a variation of that ad as well. So, yep, and then so if you go over to next, uh, to a valid, oh, sorry, hang on, I'll change the media type to basic, so it's just there. And, okay, so hello. <laughs> so, excellent, so there's obviously the criteria you need to be able before you can post it. But this is where it gets really sexy, because this is one of my favorite parts about LinkedIn and what makes it so powerful, is that it gives you the ability to then target anywhere in the world. And there's over 238 million users on LinkedIn. So if you've got a global product, if your product is or service is something that can be leveraged internationally, then you can have multiple campaigns that are going out there. But for the sake of this, if we just said Europe or if we said the United Kingdom, and if you see, notice this number over here, look at that. Oh, wow. So I told you there's 13 million users. We're almost cracking 14 million now. So that's, that's pretty crazy, the growth. Every three to four months, LinkedIn is grown by a million users in the UK. So I can be targeting everyone in the UK. You might get more specific and go for a region. Okay, but for the moment, for the sake of this exercise, I'm doing that. Um, I can target companies by name or by category. So if I wanted uh, industry, I can look at industry or company size. So really, you've got so much scope here. You might just be going for big corporate organizations, okay? And so let's say I'm going for the big corporates. Uh, that's the company we're going for. And straight away, it tells you the number of you, the marketable size, which I find is fascinating. And then over here, you can then go for the job title. So imagine I say sales director. And then this is why you need to be good at your search queries, because you can see all the different variations of sales director. But straight away, it tells me that if I'm going for uh, sales directors in the UK, companies of 5,000 employees or more, there's 2,670 of them. Bam, straight away. So that's my search query, right? And obviously you can play around with that to get more sophisticated. Then you move on to the next part. Next part is then showing you that 
this is the ad price range. There's two different ways you can look at uh, you know charging your ads. You can have it per click. So and it gives you a range. Okay, yes, there will be a recording on this. Thanks, David. Yep, great to hear. Um, so there's a um, so you can have an ad range here. And again, I won't explain it too much detail, other than just to say you know there's, there's different variations. You can either go by pay per click or you can pay by impression per thousand impressions. So pay per click, you only get charged when someone clicks on the ad. When you pay per impression, it, it means that you are able to pay per uh, thousand imp impressions that go out there and you'll get out there into the marketplace. Uh, and although if, and if somebody clicks on your ad, if two or three people click on your ad, it doesn't matter, it won't, you won't be charged the same price as per the, the thousand impress impressions. And so you've got a daily budget, you can put in 10 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever your budget is each day, have a defined date till, et cetera, et cetera. And this is even very cool functionality, you have a lead collection, which means that if you click that button, people, are, once they click on your ad, they'll get a little pop-up Saying um, saying that they'll be able, to, would you like to stay get a contact from us? So that's what makes it really cool. So you can generate leads straight away if you're if you're launching good enough. So, anyways, so there's a bit of functionality about LinkedIn ads. Okay, um, and I hope this sort of sheds some light and some some possibilities there for you. And um, so. Some of the other things, that, listen, since I'm on the platform here, I'm just going to continue on with some of the other elements that I was going to show you about how you can launch a product or service. Some of the more specific things are around, um, a, particularly with your personal profile. I'll go to your personal profile just to give you some ideas on that. Because some of the things you can do is you could change your headline. All right, so there's ads here. I'll just, I'll just splash out there. I mean, there's many, many things that we can show you how to do with LinkedIn, but I mean, I'll give you some of the, the sort of five or six points on your personal company profile to sort of get the creative juices flowing for you. But you know, changing your headline, if, you, if you're doing it in the middle of a big launch, you could say, hey, listen, uh, launching this product or service or conducting interviews or whatever the case is, and you, know, and you can sort of reach out to people straight away in there. Uh, you could change your summary. You could put a note in there about your summary. Um, and so I think there's, there's some comments coming in, sorry about the return on investment badge. I'll have to come back to those in a moment. Um, and then essentially, you know, there's some things you can throw into the summary here as well. You could change the content inside of that. And then one of the other things you can do, which I find is really useful, my screen is just playing up a little. Not sure why it's doing that. Okay. There we go, we're back. You might develop some rich media content. Some rich media content is basically uh, you can develop PowerPoint slides and host them to a, a site called SlideShare, for example. And so you could develop a, a short series of slide share or PowerPoint presentations that promote your product or service. You could then share that content in different platforms and link it back to your profile. You could you know, put a short video on here as well and put a little promotion that goes out. And again, you can point people to that. You could develop business cards and get business cards that actually point to your profile saying download this you know, pre-launch kit to show you how to, and it sells your, your coaching program. You know, so there's a few things inside of this which is just there's so much potential and opportunity of what of what you could do, um, and so there's a few things inside your profile. There's a, a number of other things I could show you as well, but I just want to be mindful of the time. And uh, and this is also we also have some other training which I'll let you know about at the end if you want to continue it with us because there's there's obviously quite a bit there. And then one of the things I wanted to show you on the really connect. Okay, I'll come back to some of these questions. I see them popping up, but I'm going to have to come back to them in a moment. Um, is it on your company profile? Once you develop your followers, feel obviously feel free to follow us if you search for really connect on uh, groups. I uh, say so not groups and companies, I should say. Um, is that you can start to develop updates and post updates uh, about products and services that you have, and you can also start to promote uh, different updates. So if you haven't uh, put an update on here, if you would say you develop a, a list of sales directors in our case, you can then start to send direct messages. To people that are per industry, per function, per seniority, per geography, etc., 
So when you build your company followers, it gives you greater ability to market and promote yourself as well. So this is why building a really strong company following page on your, your uh, company page is really important. And there's obviously a lot of strategies you can have, which uh, we're starting to play around with a lot of companies and, and starting to work with ourselves to really boost company followers. And because once you do that, it gives you really cool advanced marketing functionalities, which, you know, you're not able to do simply by, um, uh, you know, with just, uh, sorry, you can do with a free profile and having just a company profile. So there's a lot of cool things inside of that and products and services here as well. You know, there's, you can get recommendations, you can, you can promote videos, you can have video testimonials in here. So if you had a, you did a pre-launch period, you capture video testimonials, you can have people talking about your, your, you know, your program. So we've got 12 recommendations here. Um, uh, okay, so, um, so anyway, so there's, there's quite a bit of stuff here. So what I'd like to do now, folks, is uh, just sort of bring it back to you and to where you're at right now. And um, so, uh, so what I'll do is, we've probably got another 10 minutes, folks. If you can sort of hang in for that period, I'd be very grateful. And what I, I've got some questions now that I'd like to sort of share with you based on, um, you know, based on the, hang on. Rich, if I want to go back to the um, stop sharing, okay. And so, so I've got a few questions that I'd like to run past you now, okay. And, and I'm, so I'm going to whiz through some of these slides because I've already covered them as we're going through. Didn't touch on polls, but uh, campaigns is, is essentially what I showed you how to develop when the marketing side of things. Sponsored updates is something where you're able to, when you post an update, you're able then to, to market it and promote it as yourself. And it's a great way to engage with people and to, uh, you know, to really engage with people on their homepage in more of a discussional format. Um, but some of the other tips which I've run through now with you, through your profiles, your headline, looking at your summary, some of the projects you might want to get involved in. There's some general info, some targeted updates. Uh, I spoke about you know, how you can you know, really sort of target in the different areas, your product and services. You can promote, you can add videos inside of them. You can add promotions as well. Um, so, and also testimonials is a great one to have on there. So questions I have for you is, who would you like to get feedback from? Who are the people you would like to target? You know, what content would you like to create? Okay, which groups would you participate in? What ads would you create? What polls would you set up? These are all the types of things that are out there that you're able to do. So if you were able to do this stuff, what would you put together? What rich media content would you create? Would you create a slide share presentation? Would you create a YouTube video? Would you create a document? Um, so, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, I just want to add these questions in here for you so you can sort of consider those and think about what are the things that you would do to take action on these points. Now I'm seeing some of these questions here as well. So I'll cover these before I wrap things up and bring it to a close. Uh, Marva, if you offer more than one service to product, is it best to have one account or create multiple accounts for each business? Um, so, no, if, no, definitely. You have one business account, okay? And then you basically, I'd encourage you to have one business, uh, if, you, if you have, sorry, pardon me, if you have two different businesses, to have two different company pages. Definitely have two different company pages. But then if you have multiple products inside a company, then definitely just keep the company, you know, keep that associated to that company. Don't create multiple pages per product. Right? Or don't create multiple company pages per product is, is what I'm meaning on that side. Um, and I'm seeing your, hopefully that answers your question there, Marva. And Anne, I'm seeing how often would you need to update a company page. Um, the more regular, the better, okay? And the more that you update it and use it in your social selling strategy to connect and engage and provide relevant information for your targeted audience, the more you'll find relevance in doing it. So um, I'd say you know, at least daily. And there's again, there's some life hacking ways that we show our clients how to really sort of speed that up so you can update all your platforms at once. Um, so yeah, and so, oh, so Lorna, so you're asking, this is really helpful after this, which product book can I use to further drill down? <laughs> okay, great. Well, actually, that just sort of ties in uh, nicely with what I was about to mention next. So I really hope you found this is spot on, folks, and it's sort of got the, the creative juices flowing. Um, now, if I, just for a few moments, I'd love to share with you a little bit about why we do what we do and our purpose behind everything, but also how we can serve you further if, if uh, you found that to be something you'd like to continue the journey with us. 
Um, essentially, as I said, we are here to empower business owners to energize their enterprises so they can connect with more companies in engaging ways. That's really what we consistently come back to and reflect on each week. Um, and you know, as part of doing that, we have several ways to engage. If you're living outside the UK or you're too far from the UK, typically our, our training is done around London areas, then you know the online training platform is, is a, might be one of the best ways for you to engage with us. And it's a seven webinar series. There's uh, session one is about how to build an effective profile. Session two uh, is how to build and expand your network. Uh, session three is about your personal and company branding. So all these things I've just sort of said, oh, you could do this and oh, you could do that and oh, you could do that. We break it down in a lot more detail. Each one of these webinars is 90 minutes. So it's a, you know, it's a decent amount of training you're getting inside of this. Um, and then you, we show you how to get more events and offline events. So how can you, you can become more strategic with using LinkedIn to be more effective offline. 23 ways to find new customers, which is you know, some very advanced level stuff that we share with you inside of that, which is really a mind, uh, mind boggling. And you know, 30 ways to find new talent if you're looking for staff. And then how to launch a product and service. And I've given you sort of the, the, sort of the quick run through. In the training module, we go through in a lot more depth and a lot more detail. And we have a lot more time to explain things. So um, that's one way, Lorna, to, to help you out on that front. Uh, if you're interested in more information on that, if you'd like to, to purchase that, then simply go to www.reallyconnect.com forward slash QSW. So that's one way you can get involved. Uh, the other way is if you're looking to, if you say, listen, I really want to get in and work with you and Bert and Naomi and our team of trainers. Um, we're doing this social selling program that we've, we've launched has really taken off and we love talking about it because there's so much scope with the social selling world. The sales landscape has transformed massively. And so this LinkedIn social selling workshop, what we do is we design it in such a way so that we, you know, we really break down, uh, instead of doing a full day of training and giving you overwhelm and, and uh, you know, giving you too much so your cup's full and you're thinking, wow, where do I start implementing? We've broken it, we've done this a completely different way um, in that we've done it so that we break it into two half days. So the first half day, what we do is um, we get you to come along to the event and essentially what you start focusing on some very practical things about advanced searches, getting clear on what we call your easy first yes. So you've got to make it engaging for people to be able to interact with you and say yes to you. You don't ask them for an hour of your time. I give them something, some, something of value that they would expect so that they go, wow, I really want to engage, I need that information. And as soon as they stick their hand up and say, yes, I want that, you can then build the relationship with them. So we cover a lot of really cool stuff like that. And then we start to get into some, some more advanced strategies of LinkedIn um, of how you can really start to use the platform uh, more practically. And then we really look to, to, to show you how to develop customized strategies. It's all about lead generation, um, showing you how to implement each of the strategies step by step. We really break them down for you in a very formulaic uh, method. And we also show you how you can have them outsourced. So if you're a busy individual and you're like, wow, it's going to take a bit of time, we have a lot of people who come along to the events who uh, basically bring along their marketing person or someone in their team and essentially they can then deliver the strategies on their behalf. Uh, we give you a lot of email templates, tracking templates and things like that. And essentially what you end up doing is joining a group of people who are committed to mastering the art of social selling. So there's a lot of um, more information on, the, on the, uh, the, the links that you can see there or the dots dot uh, really link, really connect dot com forward slash SSP. Or if you'd like to speak to Naomi, you can reach out to her directly at Naomi at reallyconnect.com. Um, and this is an example of one of our clients who actually came along and uh, she we, literally, before we even started training, she came up and said, Mike, I have to tell you, um, as a result of the way you've structured this program, I'll show you how we do it. We give you training before you get in the room. But she said, I've already followed your techniques and it's uh, ended up turning into a contract of 15,000 pounds. And uh, so she was absolutely blown away, obviously very committed to what we're doing now. And, um, you know, and that contract is now extended quite substantially. So it's uh, turning into something quite, quite more sizable than that. So that's a very practical example of the results you could expect from, uh, from our training. Um, and so, um, so anyway, so to give you an idea, if you're interested in saying, well, what is, what's the investment for me on this? One of the way that we structure this program is, is very cool because we want to make sure that you've got the ability to answer, have all your questions answered and to make sure that we do as high level training with you as possible. 
So before you get into the room, what we ask you to do is actually we ask you to do to sit through and actually uh, apply a few of the modules from the the training, the online training that is. So we ask you to we actually set you a bit of play work, not homework, but play work in advance, and you're able to then apply a lot of the methods. So by the time you get into the room, the quality of your questions are much higher level. But what it also means is that you're able to um, you know, you're able to uh, that are like a, the foundations of their training is already in place, and what it means is that we can then take things to the next level. So we really get all the things that are passive stuff, like your profile, your company page, uh, rich media content, and things like this. You do that before you get in the room. So when you come there, we can focus on the lead generation strategies, the stuff that's going to get you real results. And that's why you have examples like Trish, who uh, you know she started applying that and did some advanced stuff before getting in the room and already saw results. Um, so that's really how we structure the program. Uh, the first three programs have sold out, and um, you know, so these are the, the investment. If you're looking at it, it's literally it's normally 247 pounds for the Quick Start webinar series, um, and so for the Social Selling Workshop, it's 397 pounds as well. So the total investment on that side is uh, 644 pounds. However, because we know that you know we would we want to make sure you get the most value from that. So we know that by having you do the, the online training before you get in the room is going to make a massive impact. So what we do on that level is we offer the online training and, and include in the package for just $3.97 plus VAT. So you can find out more information about that at uh, you know, readyconnect.com forward slash FSP or contact Naomi directly. Or if you're interested but you just have a few questions and you're thinking, you know, is this for me, is it not for me? I'd really like to talk to someone beforehand. Well, then we'd like to invite you to, to take some very easy steps. And the easy step is number one: you can download a profile self-assessment tool, where you can say, "Hey, this is um, you know I'd like to just sort of find out how well my profile rates on a scale of one to hundred by answering some pretty straightforward questions." And uh, and then if you like that, what you can also do is you can have a complimentary forty-five minute LinkedIn accelerator session with Naomi or one of our other training consultants who will be able to run you through some practical pointers of your profile, what you could be doing to develop a strategy for you that will get real results. And so it's, it's a very valuable session. Um, you know, it's not right for everyone. After these sessions, most people don't move forward with going to the training, uh, which is completely fine because uh, our goal is to make sure you get real value from these sessions so that when the time is right for your training, you finally say, actually, I'd love to go with you guys. So there's no expectation or obligation, obviously, uh, afterwards. So it's a very valuable session. If you want to take advantage of that, it's really connect.com forward slash accelerator. So I'll answer a few more questions, stick around at the very end, folks, but I just want to be respectful of the time. So I'm going to, want to wrap it up with this and I'll hang around for a few more moments. But the question I'll leave you with is, what does your digital future look like? And one of our other clients who came along to this session um, in between the two sessions literally saw a, a landed a contract worth half a million pounds to them. And you know, and he's absolutely blown away by this. And part of the reason why he and his company got involved in this is because they realised that their company, they're in the charity sector, but their 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 company had not been moving online at all. And they realised that the time had come for them to really start embracing this new way of doing business. And they realised that their digital future, although it wasn't so important five years ago, in five years' time from now, is going to be hugely important to them. So they just decided to make the commitment, and obviously they were very well rewarded for doing so. <laughs> So uh, if you'd like to take advantage of any of these offers, please let us know. And regardless, I really hope that you've been able to get some massive value from some of the tips I've shared. Love to hear, stay in touch with you. Um, you know, stay in touch with our LinkedIn company page, our Facebook group, etc. And I will now stick around for any other questions that come up. Have yourself a spectacular day. Beautiful. Thanks for that, folks. So are there any other questions that have come up? Uh, I've got Marva. I know. I think I've seen that question. Uh, I've got delayed in comments call. Can I get a copy of the recording? Yes, you can, Stephen. That that'll be made available for you. Uh, very helpful session. Good to hear, Joanne. Thanks. That was excellent. Good to hear, Anne. Thanks, Peter. Is there any other questions people have got now that I'm not running through everything at a pace of knots. <laughs> and apologies if I had to cover so, you know, if it seemed a bit rushed at times, I just want to make sure I can cover through everything. To, there's so much we can cover and I sort of feel like we're just touching the iceberg with it all. So, Mike, I find the minimum bid for ads versus high-end ROI 
No break in pace. Yeah, Stefan, I would completely agree. Are you on here still? Yeah, you are. Yeah, I mean the the uh, we did a comparison just recently, and yeah, the, I mean it's it's usually about one fifty one sixty four for per click, and on Facebook, I mean you can get them for like twenty seven p thirty p or something. So I think that there's the in the the functionality, Stefan, of uh, the LinkedIn ads and so on is is got a long way to go to compete with Facebook. Uh, however, it really depends on the quality of person you're you're looking to target, because Facebook, although it has greater volume and everything like that, uh, and they're more advanced, that's been their main revenue stream, and that's why it's so advanced that that platform. Um, you know, the the LinkedIn ads isn't as advanced. However, it's not where they make their their main revenue from, and so the the sort of the thing you sort of subsidize for using Facebook is you might not be able to target your target audience as well. It all depends who you're going after, because if you're going after CIOs of, of top corporate organizations, then you know you, it's highly unlikely you can get through them on Facebook. So yeah, I, I hear your point, and I think that it's um, uh, yeah that it's that, that's the sort of difference. And, and LinkedIn makes its its revenue majority through other ways and other means. So uh, any other questions? No problem. If, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly right. <laughs> If you get four clicks and it turns into a client, or <laughs> you know, I've got no problem paying four pound fifty. But the you know the reality of it is, as you know, I'm sure you know with with these ads, you've got to get uh, you know you've got to get the copyright, you've got to get the page right. There's a lot of elements that go into converting uh, someone who has a click. But you get it right. And the thing is about LinkedIn is that it's more a content rich place. People are going there for content, and they're going there for information and advice. Whereas a platform like Facebook, they're going for social, for hanging out and things like that. So, um, yeah, great. There's quite a few people sticking around. Thanks for that, folks. So is there any other questions we've got? Maria, okay. How about linking up with Facebook and Twitter? Do you cover this in the training? Thanks for asking the question. Maria, are you on here still? Yes, you are. Okay, so uh, listen, we, we touch on it, uh, Maria. We, we can do a bit more stuff. We do sort of high-level stuff. We can cover it. Uh, however, a majority of our focus is on LinkedIn. And what we also introduce, Maria, is other social selling tools. So, for example, what we look at is we, we have conversations about what's a CRM you're using because that's a very powerful way to, that you need to have linked up to your, your, um, your online platforms, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn. You look at your appointment, like having automated appointments and what we call appointment core. You might look at Time Trader and how do you have your appointments automatically set for you so you can reach out and you'll notice when you go to, for example, the, uh, the accelerator session page. So I'll go back a page here. If you look at, uh, just, just for your own personal interest, and you know, feel free to take up the offer, but for your own personal interest, go to, oh, hang on, pressing the wrong button. Go to this page, the www.readyconnect.com forward slash accelerator. If you go to that page, Maria, you'll notice that there's a bit of information from Naomi, but you also notice you have the ability to book an online appoint, uh, automated appointment. And that's all linked to our CRM. So uh, a lot of the social selling techniques we cover are you know, some, some quite practical stuff like that to give you insights so that you can have things being uh, happening in your business in an automated way. So, um, you know, we would look to tee up with someone who is a Facebook expert and a Twitter expert who would, who would uh, get involved in the community, but we wouldn't do that ourselves. So we can touch on it, give advice, and, uh, you know, particularly when it comes to other things such as when you, how can you do one update and have it update multiple platforms? There's tools you can use to do that. We cover that sort of stuff, but we don't cover Facebook strategies. So hope that gives you an understanding, sort of a long-winded response to your question. <laughs> Uh, right. What what exactly are you looking for, uh, Maria? And who's your marketplace out of interest? And do you have any other questions? Anyone got a question they'd like to repost? Uh, public sector. Okay. Wow, that's an interesting one, Maria. So you know, if if you're looking for public sector, uh, interesting thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, would they be on Facebook? I think they'd be on Facebook. Uh, I don't know how many of them would be tagging themselves uh, as, as being in public sector, which would, might be challenging. But the part of the reason why there's such phenomenal growth 
with LinkedIn at the moment is because there's a lot of dormant industries that are now waking up to LinkedIn, which is quite quite interesting. So you've got industries such as the medical profession, the charity sector, the public sector. These are uh, industries that really haven't been too active on LinkedIn so far. Just like even 18 months ago, small business market, you know, they weren't so active on, on LinkedIn, but now there's a real vibrancy around it. So what's spurring a lot of the growth of, of you know, LinkedIn growing in the UK for about a million users a month, a month, so every few months, is the fact that you've got a lot of uh, dormant industries who are now waking up to it. So if that's a marketplace you're going after, then I would say that it, you know, you'll serve yourself really well by being able to understand how to use some of the advanced, tech, you know, advanced strategies um, that LinkedIn can provide uh, to be able to do that. Well, and find a uh, mix of social media to get best results. Yeah, okay, cool. That's a really interesting, Stefan. Um, and I think like most things in business, you know, there's, there's, this is not the only, you know, marketing strategy I'd recommend for your business. I think that you've got to find, as a business owner, you've got to find the route to market that works best for you. And LinkedIn for a lot of B2B and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, markets is, is, very, is probably one of the best strategies for you. But the more advanced you get with your business, the more you can experiment, and you want to be as in as many places as wherever your prospects are as possible. Uh, okay, thanks, Mark. What about the promotion? So, Philomena, what about the promotion of a product service in the promotion section of group? Yes, yes. So that's one thing. Again, I didn't just due to the lack of time. So that's a really cool functionality as well. So um, depending on the rules and the requirements of different groups. You can absolutely post your, you know, uh, updates about that in uh, in different uh, groups that you're involved in, particularly if it's where your prospects are, your target markets are. Like, there's some really great ways to have an update there, and, and people will go there. And there's a separate tab for that as well, where you can go in and look at just the promotions. And now, even in the normal updates, there's promotional updates, so people will start to be able to search by what sort of updates they want. And you know, if you're a sales director in there, and you're like, oh, hang on. Oh, there's a big group here. I wonder what's happening in the social selling world. You put an update in there, and they can search for promotions on that, and all of a sudden you pop up. So yeah, so some very very cool ways. So well, uh, good good spot in there, Philomena. Um, and again, we just <laughs> don't have enough time in a, in a short webinar like this. So um, excellent. Is there any other questions that that people have that we can answer at the moment? Wrapping up, is there any questions I've missed? I know there's a long e conversation trail here, so I've been able to see everything else. Yes, yeah, so uh, Maria, again, I think you're saying a question from earlier on. You said within your network, so it is only searching your contacts, not the whole database. Yeah, I think that's when I was going back a bit earlier with my, my uh, contacts. Is um, yeah. So the richer your network is, Maria, the better your search results will get. And this is why a lot of the training that we ask people to cover before they get into the room is a lot of the foundation principles. There's a lot of foundational things we ask people to to cover, such as getting your profile up to date, building your network, advancing your network, reaching out and connecting with all the people that you've done business with and you've you've known over your, your past career and, and even friendships. So that by the time you get into the room, um, you know you've, you've then got a rich network in place already, and you can then get better results with your your targeted searches because LinkedIn is a third degree network in that it will show you how you're connected people into you know into three degrees. First degree being people you know, the second degree being the people that you know but don't know, and the third degree being the people that they know that you don't know. <laughs> Now, it's a bit heady when you sort of say it like that, but it makes sense if you break it down. And so LinkedIn is just a third degree network, so it'll give you access to people in that in that scope. And then what will happen is that, um, you know, the, the, obviously the richer your network becomes, the better that you can get uh, targeted responses to your searches. And that's why having ads and marketing, uh, you know, of that nature allows you to bypass all the networks, whether you're connected to someone in Four, four degrees or five degrees or not, you can still market to them. Um, 
there's something there that's interesting because I think there is something about personality in building network. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what you're implying by that. I mean, there's a couple of ways I could imply that based on what Tui comes back and training from us. But I think that the the thing to understand in this social era that we're in in business is that it's it really comes down to the quality of your network. It's not the quantity of your network, it's the quality of your network. And there's, particularly in a social sense and growing your network, your reputation and leveraging trust through, your, through the platform, you know, you want to connect with as many people that you know and have done business with as possible because they could become gateways of opportunity and plus people who have done business, you've done business with in the past who you do have a trusted relationship with, you don't know where they've come from in the past and what sort of network they have now. And that's where it becomes really interesting. Um, um, I don't do it naturally, yeah, and that's fine. And, and this is the thing with LinkedIn, Maria, is that you can really become more proactive with building networks online. You become more strategic with how you build networks. So instead of, I'll give you an example of what I mean by that, is instead of going out to a networking event, uh, Maria, and, and hoping you meet these health and educational people who will be able to you know, advance your career or help you get win contracts and so on, uh, instead of randomly meeting them, what you can do is you can start to build, uh, you can search for them online, find out who they are and say, wow, that's someone I want to connect with, and then be strategic about the relationships you build. So this is where LinkedIn, you can do a lot more in an hour sitting in your home and building networks than going out into 10 networking events, <laughs> where it probably takes up the equivalent of five days of your time and effort. So, um, you know, that's the thing I really love about it. It levels the playing field. Uh, okay, so, and also, by the way, just added a recommendation to this webinar on your company LinkedIn page. It also booked Accelerate calls later today. Oh, thanks, Anne. That's terrific. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Quick one, how to, how about how personal profile for your jobs as well as on a group. My intention is to keep them all in one place, but would that take away from job opportunities? Let me read that again. Are you still on, Anne? You are, yep. Personal profile views for jobs as well as on online business. Okay, I get you. My intention is to keep them in one place. Would you, uh, but would you take that, uh, take away them from job opportunities? Yeah, listen, I think, Anne, it, it's a question that often comes up when people have different thing, fingers in different pies and I would not recommend, I would not recommend having multiple profiles. Just have one because it always comes across as a lack of credibility if someone finds two of your profiles and they go, hang on, why are you being, why, what do you got to hide? And that sort of puts in that air of deceit out there and so it can kill the relationship or the trust that you have with someone. So we would not recommend that. What I would encourage you to do is to find a way to be able to, um, you know, to, to find the synergies between both opportunities, between your job and your online element. What are the commonalities? Why do you do both? Why are you looking for jobs in this area? And why do you build this online business? And come from the why space around it, I find, is, is one of the best ways. And so it makes sense to anyone reading, oh, I get why you're building an online business, and I get why you want to do these jobs. And, uh, you know, and you sort of merge. And maybe you keep, the, you keep one as a focus, keep one as a really strong focus, and maybe just add a couple of sentences about the other. Maybe the online business you still have in there, but it's not a, doesn't get 50% of your summary exposure. Um, we cover that a lot and in a lot more detail as well in some of the, uh, the online training, the, the Quick Start webinar series. That's, that's a big one that comes up. In fact, we will, um, I hope that helps you though, Anne. Uh, okay, so we also have Keith, be a line, Maria. <laughs> That's a LinkedIn open networker. I like that one, Keith, good. Uh, I connect to anybody who's got a good profile because they are serious business people. Increase your chance of connecting with other people you want to find for your business. Yeah, and I, I think it, you just got to be clear that there's two sort of distinct strategies with it, Maria. I think. One is, is Keith is applying, which is a line, which is LinkedIn Open Networker, which is to connect with as many savvy people online. And, and you know, you uh, imagine, Keith, you have your own criteria of who you do reach out with. And, um, and I'm sure that you have an intention to build a relationship with them and to, you're doing it with the right intentions. Um, what we typically advise in most cases, and it really comes back to what is your goal and your objective. But in most cases, we do advise people to, to spend the time to, have, have some criteria around why you're connecting with people. What is your personal criteria for saying yes and no and to almost going back and if someone reaches out to you, 
you know, asking them why they're reaching out if you want to build that type of network. But in most cases, uh, we find that building a quality network as opposed to a quantity network is more advisable. But I'm sure, Keith, that you also have uh, clear reasons, and I'm, I'm sure if you're doing it as well, you're seeing some results with it. So um, as long as you're clear in terms of why you're doing what you're doing and you create your own parameters around that, then either strategy can work. So, no, I'm a magpie. I collect wordy stuff. I'm a copywriter by trade. I will. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Okay, beautiful. Uh, need a lot of help now. It's on the 23rd. Okay, terrific. All right, folks. Well, there's still quite a few people sticking around. Um, some good dialogue, good conversations happening here. So that's been really helpful. And uh, you know, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll have, be having more of these. So feel free to come back and check out more and find out what we're doing. And if you again, if you want any, uh, you know, if you want to have a further conversation with us about anything. Um, I, I hope you get that our style is is to add value. It's not about feeling you making you feel pressure to do anything you don't feel inclined to do. It really is about trying to serve you to find ways to help you become more effective. And uh, the reason why our social zone program is getting such good rave reviews and results is because we're very clear about who are the right people for it. And so Naomi is doing a great job with being able to identify who those people are. So. Um, I've enjoyed listening to your great Aussie accent. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like it's been a while since I've been there too. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, thank you for tuning in, folks. I think we'll call it a day there. But it's been really, I've really enjoyed it. So I hope to see you back next time. And wherever our, cross, our paths may cross, I hope that between now and then that you have a, a wealth of success. And, uh, and, and also, if you get some su success from these results, Feel free to follow us on our company page, and uh, you know I'd love to to hear any updates you have and any other further progress you, you get. That's terrific. That's great to hear, Marva. Inspired. That's what we're after. As long as it's inspired, um, uh, as long as the the inspiration turns to action. <laughs> and Joanne, great. I'm not sure what the the PSA scary oh, scary moment. You you uh, you probably got the score back. Is that perhaps? <laughs> and um, thanks, David. Thanks for that. Best of luck with the follow up and uh, excellent. All right, guys, thank you for that, and I will catch you next time.